Hey, so, as many of you guys will know, my franchise of choice is Star Wars. Like, I love Star Wars. I've got everything to do with Star Wars. I've loved Star Wars since I was tiny. But there are other franchises that I enjoy. I enjoy, like, Lord of the Rings and The Hobbit. I enjoy um, Jurassic Park and Jurassic World. And I enjoy Harry Potter and the Harry Potter universe. And that is what we're going to be talking about today because we've got a little collection of stuff. I mean, clearly there are going to be much bigger fans with much bigger collections than what we've got. But I just thought I'd talk about the Harry Potter collection because I feel like that's one that gets overlooked a lot. So let's take a look at the Harry Potter shelf that we've got going on. Oh, by the way, full disclosure, this is also Lauren's absolute favourite franchise as well. But, um, she's downstairs, she didn't want to be involved in the vlog because one, she's still in her pyjamas, two, she's playing on The Sims, and three, she's got really greasy hair. So she said she doesn't want to appear on the vlog. There you go. So it's down to me. Anyway, Harry Potter shelf, turn around. So often when filming this shelf, it usually ends up just being this, this shelf here, this particular one here. That's the Star Wars shelf. We're going to move up two shelves. Not this one. This one's just a miscellaneous stuff shelf. But to here. Here is the primarily, just, just ignore this guy, the primarily Harry Potter shelf. In all its glory. As I said, there are clearly other people with bigger Harry Potter collections than what we've got, but that's okay. Let's just, let's see, let's take delve into what we do got. So we're going to start over here on the left hand side we have got the Lego Night Bus here. That, hold on, yep, it's the right side. It opens up, it's got little Harry Potter in there, he slides around in his bed. It's got a chandelier that moves, it closes up like that. Inside here you've got Oh no, I forgot the driver's name. What's the driver's name? Stan Sh Ernie. Ernie. Ernie the bus driver. And then, back here, here's Ernie, clung onto the back, the conductor of the night bus. Ernie just jumped. And he's back. Ernie, the conductor of the night bus, holding a, a little, a little newspaper, the Daily Prophet down there, with a picture of Harry Potter on it. So yeah. This this is the first the first item on the Harry Potter shelf. Next up, let's talk Blu-rays. Here is the complete film collection, the Harry Potter complete eight film collection, featuring all eight films. So there's uh, hold on, there's the Philosopher's Stone, there is the Chamber of Secrets, there is Prisoner of Azkaban, Goblet of Fire, Order of the Phoenix. Half-Blood Prince and Deathly Hallows Part 1 and 2. These are not in order, I've just realised that and that is really upsetting me. So, hang on, I'm, I'm going to have to fix this. That one. That one. That one. Done. Okay, they're in the correct order now. And I feel much better about that. But yeah, the complete 8 film Harry Potter collection. Something that we've not watched in in far too long. We're going to have to have a rewatch real soon. But yeah, a good film series. Next up we have got Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them. Let's talk about this film. It is not necessarily a bad film. Let me start by saying that. But I feel like it's just not as good as the original Harry Potter film series, if you know what I mean. Like, it, it just doesn't feel like the same universe, and I don't know why. Like, I fully understand that, as a Star Wars fan, there are people that dislike the prequels and the sequels, that just love the original trilogy. I love them all. I feel like I'm giving Fantastic Beasts the same treatment that those Star Wars fans give the prequels and the sequels. So, I'm going to try not to do that, but... We've only got Fantastic Beasts and where to find them. I realise that the crimes of Grindelwald the second in this film series has also been out for a long time and we've still not seen it so we are going to buy the Blu-ray eventually and watch it 
but we've just not got it yet because the spark's not there. But it's a decent addition to the to the whole thing. It's my least favourite of all the Harry Potter universe films so far, but but it's there. We're going to move on to books now. So we've got a, a, a couple of small books. We've got The Tales of Beedle the Bard. Then we've got Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them by Newt Scamander, which is the book that this film is based on. Then we've got Quidditch Through the Ages by Kenilworthy Wisp, my favourite author. We're going to skip these next three. We'll come back to them soon. After those, we're going to go into the to the uh, the meat and bones of the actual Harry Potter series, the actual books. So look at this one. This is Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone. It's even got an award right there on the front. 1997 Gold Award winner for ages nine to eleven. Also, look on the back. It's got like it's got a wrong depiction of Dumbledore. Like Dumbledore said to have a big old grey beard and. And everything like that. This 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 image does not match what Dumbledore is in the book. I feel like they updated it in later editions, but we've got one of the older editions. Next up, there is Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets, and then everyone's favourite, The Prisoner of Azkaban. Then we're going to go on to the chunky ones, the chunky monkeys. We've got Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire. This one's a hardback version, so we've got two paperback. The rest are hardback. I don't know why. Um, yeah, the Goblet of Fire, then we got Order of the Phoenix, hold on, let me move Ray's Lego Speeder from the top of it, we got Order of the Phoenix there, look at that Phoenix, then we've got Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince, this one's probably my favourite of all the, all the franchise, and the film as well, the film's awesome too, Half-Blood Prince, look at that, look at that action, action's going on right there guys, action. And then the last in the book series, we've got Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows. Look at them there. Absolute nightmare. So, there's the main Harry Potter book series that we've all read them, we've all enjoyed them. It's a good book series. Also a good film series. I said that I was going to go back to these books. Let's. So these three books here are... Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone, Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets, Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban, but they've come in fancy house-themed jackets like that, you see, because Lauren's a Hufflepuff, apparently. Lauren's a Hufflepuff. So she had to buy all the Hufflepuff covers, who, who is represented by a badger, as you can see. Uh, so far, they've only released the first three. They've not even gotten to those four yet. But they're going to come eventually, and they're going to get added to the to the shelf of of magical wonder. So from there, we're going to hop right on back over here to the end again, and back to Fantastic Beasts because we've got the original screenplay for Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them, and also the original screenplay for Fantastic Beasts: The Crimes of Grindelwald. Lauren's read those. I've not read those yet. She's also read Harry Potter and the Cursed Child, which is the stage show, which you can go see in London still, I think. Um, again, Lauren's read this. I've not read this. This is this is like a sequel to the Harry Potter book series. This is what happens afterwards. This features Harry's kid. Is it Albus Severus? I don't know. I've not seen the play. I've not read the book, but yeah. There's the Cursed Child play thing. And then for the last bit of Harry Potter stuff that we've got out, we've got this sign here that's got all sorts of different places from the Wizarding World. I feel like Lauren got this from Primark. But yeah, it's a cool little thing. We've got a load of um, bags that we got from Ollivander's when we went to Florida to the uh, Wizarding World in Universal Studios. You can buy ones and then of course, we've got a whole selection of wands. We've got Bellatrix Lestrange, the Death Eater, Voldemort, uh, Professor Snape, Hermione Granger, Professor Slughorn, Sirius Black, and Professor Dumbledore. Eight separate ones. And they're all like pretty awesome quality. By the way, ignore this dust. I've not dusted this in a while, but yeah. 
the wands are awesome. This one's the uh, the Death Eater wand, as you can tell. Clearly, it's a cheery wand. And then up top, we've got Professor Slughorn's wand too, which has got like slug eyes on top. Can you see? That, that's because it's called Slughorn. The horns of a slug. It all makes sense now, but yeah. This is a wand. So we got some of those from, um, as I said, Universal Studios in Orlando, Florida. We also got some from the Harry Potter Studio Tour down in Watford in London, which is awesome, by the way. It's a fun day out. But yeah, that's pretty much the entire entirety of the Harry Potter collection that we've got out at the minute. There are a few other bits and pieces that are stored away, that are archived away, uh, that is to say, that are in boxes in the attic. But for the most part, that, that's pretty much everything. Um, oh, also, real quick, over here. How on earth could I forget the small range of Harry Potter Funko Pops that we've also got? Look at that, look at all these Harry Potter ones. This one's awesome. Luna Lovegood with a lion head also, this one's pretty cool. Newt Scamander from Fantastic Beasts. A little picket. It's Bow Truckle. Okay, now, yeah, that is definitely everything that we've got on display in this room. Yep. Um, so, let me know what your favourite Harry Potter film, book, whatever is, um, and I hope you enjoyed seeing our collection. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and a subscribe if you're not already. And with that being said, I'm going to get gone, so I'll see you guys next time.